there is such a lack of support networks and support systems for those youth. They believe that they are probably the only gay person in the world. This community is so underserved. We're not doing a good enough job of protecting these kids. This is a city emergency. It's a quiet emergency because you don't hear it because they don't have a voice. But it is an emergency. If that amount of children were suicidal and, and, and there, there was no response, we, people would be outraged. And we are outraged. But we're also hopeful because we, we've seen how much change there's been. Yaakov Steinberg is a member of a group called Jewish Queer Youth in New York City. The nonprofit works with LGBTQ teens and young adults in some of the city's most insular Jewish communities. Many reach out to JQY while struggling to accept their identities and come out to their families. For me, living my best life means living in what I see as a seemingly irreconcilable conflict between um, identifying as bisexual within the LGBT community and identifying as an Orthodox Jew. Across the country, lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth are nearly five times more likely to attempt suicide than their heterosexual peers. Researchers say the issue is harder to track among religious communities, like the ones where JQI has focused its efforts. Let's say in the yeshivish community and the Hasidish community, which I grew up in, many youth in those communities don't have access to the internet, let alone the fact that they are too afraid to even find out if any support networks are even there for them to take advantage of. Yaakov says his family has been supportive, but he still experienced homophobia in the community. That's when he started to look for help. I think one day I was just, as all young queers tend to do, um, you look for people similar to yourself and your own online, and I stumbled across this entire world, this entire universe of queer LGBT identified individuals, and I was like, there are people like me. I'm not alone. I, it made me. It, it just made me so happy to see. Like I said before, JQI is a safe and confidential space. Just because you're here doesn't mean that you're necessarily identifying as any one thing. You can be LGBTQ and straight people come here too because we love straight people also. You're here. If you feel you belong here, then you do belong here. This is cheating. I'm so happy that my dad is here. Mordechai Levovitz is JQI's founder and clinical director. He created the group in 2001 as a casual meetup. Now, it's a nonprofit with more than 400 members, a helpline, and a drop-in center in Midtown Manhattan. Every Thursday night, they open the doors for 13 to 23-year-olds in need of help. Participation is confidential, but some JQI members have agreed to appear on camera for this video. When people walk into the drop-in center, the first thing that they have to do if they're new is that they have to go speak to a social worker for a 20 to 25 minute intake where we assess for risk, we learn a little about them, because there's no data about this community. We want to know, you know, where, what's going on with these teens. So we've had about 300 so far teens in the, the drop-in center. So it's still not a, a huge uh, amount of data, but it, it's growing. So things that we've learned uh, from these intakes are, are really interesting and sometimes really disturbing. Over 75% of the teens in the drop-in center report suicidality, which means that at one point in their life, they were thinking about suicide. Uh, that is much higher than not only the national average for that age, but even LGBTQ teens. That 75% is, is an unacceptable number. Uh, for suicidality. It grounds, I think, everybody at the drop-in center because the drop-in center is fun. It's a light, fun place. It's on purpose that we keep it light and fun and not heavy because the teens deserve a light and fun place. They have enough heaviness in their life. You got it. Huh? Okay. You got okay. No, but I'm looking for, like, potatoes that look nice. The drop-in center started around the time that I started with JQY. You come every week, you do a different random activity, you eat a meal, you can check in with a social worker, but there's usually the same core group of people and you just find a way to keep in touch throughout the week. Sandy Gouin started going to JQI events in 2015 when he was 18 years old. There was a time at which I didn't know what it meant to be trans and then when I did, I was very scared that I knew that that would be very hard to be openly trans in the world. And then I got over that and then I just went for it. 
But in that middle time, I was like freaking out. What do I do? While it is like taught to us not to be afraid because God is always there, there are going to be times where people are scared. And the best thing to do when you're scared is to reach out for help. There's a statistic out there which says that um, if in school an LGBT identified student has at least one accepting faculty member, the chances of them uh, going to self-harm is reduced dramatically. And for me, um, within JQY, Sandy was that person, and is that person. Sandy is that person. Yaakov is talking about new research from the Trevor Project, a nonprofit dedicated to LGBTQ youth suicide prevention. A study released in June 2019 showed that LGBTQ youth who report having at least one accepting adult were 40% less likely to report a suicide attempt in the past year. If I had not found JQY, I would not have ever even thought of coming out to anyone. That is what drop -in enabled me to do. It enabled me to love myself because there were others like me who supported me and, and I supported them and we supported each other. It gave me, it gave me everything. It gave me everything I needed. The twisting is fine. It doesn't have to be perfect, yeah. I don't really know how to like quantify the before versus after JQY so well anymore because I've been so blessed these last three years that I've sort of like, that has been the bulk of my time that I've been able to be open and happy. Hello, everybody! Hello, thank you all. So first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming. We really wanted to do something that, for the community, in, in spirit of pride, but the way we understand pride. We understand pride as nachas. We need to make sure that nobody, no teen, no Jewish teen, no teen anywhere, ever has to think that they can't tell the people that they love who they are. Ever has to think that they're not worthy of pride, of nachas. I find strength in numbers, and I find strength in like, honestly, uh, finding levity in the things that have made me uncomfortable. And those moments where we sort of get to tell our story not really that censored, that's, that's where power is, is connecting with people.